Good evening. My name is Chandler Hassan, and I am from the College of Sciences, where I am a master's student in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry, where my work is supervised by Dr. Ernesto Abel Santos. As a graduate student, I'm often asked, what is it that you study? So when I tell people I study anthrax, this generally makes people nervous. And that's fair. That's because most of what we all know or have heard about anthrax stems from this, the 2001 anthrax attacks, in which our US Postal Service was used as a means to conduct bioterrorism. And so when I say or mention anthrax, most people are reminded of images like this. And again, those feelings of panic and fear and uncertainty come back because nobody likes to think about a guy in a hazmat suit. It's never a good sign. So as we're moving forward here, 15 years removed from this incident, we're asking ourselves, are we any safer today than we were then? And that's an issue that our presidential candidates and all political leaders are gonna to have to answer. And we expect the answer to be yes. So by the end of this speech today, I'll share with you how my lab and my research is doing something to help foster that, that solution. But before we begin, it's important that we understand anthrax and what it all entails. So some quick facts. Everything starts with this guy right here. This is Bacillus anthracis. And this is a bacteria that releases toxins. And it's actually these toxins that lead to the disease, anthrax. And we characterize the disease in one of three ways. So there's cutaneous. This is where you become infected by maybe a cut on your skin. There is gastrointestinal, which is an, inf an infection that begins in your stomach. And then last and most severe form is inhalation anthrax. And this is where I study. And in order to kind of understand what makes it so deadly, you need to know one more thing about Bacillus anthracis. It's what we call a spore former. And to them, this is a survival mechanism. But this is exactly what makes it so deadly to us. To understand what a bacterial spore is, let's start with a very simple example. Imagine you have a plant seed. You put it in the ground, not much is going to happen. But if you give it some nutrients, sunlight and water in this case, and with a little luck, maybe you'll get yourself a nice flowering plant. However, if you deny that seed or that plant its nutrients, chances are it's going to die. But let's imagine a scenario in which we deny it its nutrients, and rather than dying, it does something like this, and it reverts back to this seed form. And then upon re-addition of, the, of the nutrients, sunlight and water, you go right back to a flowering plant. Well, this is exactly what the life cycle of Bacillus anthracis is, and why it's a survival mechanism. When times are good, it's a toxin-producing bacteria. But anytime it's stressed, it's denied its nutrients, it reverts to this spore form, and it can freely move back and forth depending on what's available to it. However, if it's given enough nutrients and a long enough time there, it will reproduce, and that's more toxin-producing bacteria, and that's more spores. And this is a big problem, because spores are the problem. Spores are microscopic, cannot see them. They're dormant. So think of a volcano, much like a volcano can sit there in its dormant state and nothing happens, and then all of a sudden erupt. Same sort of thing with, with these spores. As soon as they get their nutrients, revert back to toxin-producing form. But third, and probably the most problematic portion of this, is they're resistant to everything. Antibiotics, your doctor cannot prescribe you anything to treat the spores. Household disinfectants, there is nothing you're gonna find under your kitchen sink that will get rid of these spores. And third, environmental factors. Temperature, pH, pressure, doesn't matter. These spores are resistant to everything. It is the perfect survival mechanism and exactly what's so pro problematic as far as we're concerned. So let's take a look now at exactly what happened in 2001 with the anthrax letters. So unsuspecting individuals would open a letter and were exposed to these spores, at which point they quickly made their way down into a person's lungs. And this is where the spores want to be. They have found our weak, weak spot. Once inside your lungs, your body elicits an immune response. It calls into place its defensive cells. And the job of these cells is simply to remove anything that's not supposed to be there. And that's what they do. They just gobble these things up. So far, so good. But let's examine the fate. So up top, we see that our macrophage, our defensive cell in this case, has consumed a toxin-producing bacteria. And on the bottom, you see the, the defensive cell has consumed a spore. So up top, we see no problem at all. We have neutralized this toxin-producing bacteria. Completely different story on the bottom. Instead, you see something like this. Not only has your macrophage, your defensive cell been compromised, but now we have an emerging toxin-producing bacteria. 
And that should seem like a conundrum to you. Doesn't make sense. How can our body get rid of something that's already producing toxins, but this rather innocuous spore is emerging and producing toxins? And this is a problem because this is where the disease begins to set in and you're gonna, be, you're gonna develop sepsis. So your blood is gonna become toxic. And this is where people succumb to the disease because the only treatment up to this point is pattern recognition by doctors. If you don't know what you're looking for, this is probably gonna go unnoticed until it's too late. But let's take a look at what's here in blue. This is actually calcium. And we see this upon the germination of these spores as it moves from spore to toxin producing bacteria. Now calcium, it does more than just give you strong bones. Um, it's actually a way that cells communicate back and forth. As such, your cells need to have a mechanism in place to respond to these different levels of signals. Now in the case of the macrophage, your, this defensive cell, it doesn't have a really good system in place. If it gets too much calcium, it just dies. And that's not any good. But we think this may be playing a part in what's allowing the spores to go from spore to toxin producing bacteria. And in our lab, and along the lines of my research, we're going to examine this effect using various biochemical and molecular techniques. And the hopes that by understanding how we get to this, this state, we'll be able to better design some more effective treatments so that doctors can better treat you if another attack were to occur. So again, now we're gonna move back to what can our, our political leaders, our presidential candidates do to help us? We're doing the research here. We just ask that they continue to fund us to continue to solve these problems so that the next time I tell you that I work with anthrax or maybe tonight following this and we're out there having drinks, you're not so scared to stand next to me. Thank you.